All right, this morning we're going to cover how to download a file in using PowerShell. There was a request for how to download a file using PowerShell and import it into SQL Server. In one of the private videos, I discuss how to import multiple flat files into SQL Server. So the second part of it where we download the file and then we import it into SQL Server is already covered. And uh, you can subscribe and, and see that video because more than likely if you're just downloading a file, then it's not going to be as complicated as importing multiple flat files. You'll just use a similar process except with just one file. It'll be fairly simple. But this morning we're going to cover how to download the file. So in the case of uh, downloading a file, we're going to use the system.net web client library. So of course I'm clearing the screen here and then I am declaring a new object and that new object is going to be system.net.webclient and in fact if you're familiar with C-sharp you'll know that that's actually fairly uh, familiar. I'm going to actually put this down here. Okay now the two big pieces and if you're, mul if you're going to download multiple files from the same location these are the pieces right here that will change whether it's for a loop or whether it's just for a process and that is the source and the destination. So the source is the website from where the file is coming. In this case we're looking at CSV data from Tesla Motors and you'll notice that our destination is flat files tesla.csv. So let's go to that location and you'll see we just have savings rate currently. Now if you're going to do multiple flat files these are where you will uh, these are where you will change that information in this case uh, the source doesn't have at least I don't see Tesla in it and so for instance um, you may pass in wherever that's going to be changing and you would pass in right here where that's going to be changing so if you were looping through like for instance multiple files that started with a certain name then you would pass in the name not only to the source in your um, URL string but you would also pass in that name to the destination and so that's how you would download multiple flat files and then of course you have the, the video for importing multiple flat files. Alright now what we're going to do is we're going to call the object web and the method on that object download file we're going to pass in the source and then we're going to pass in the destination. So this is going to grab the source and it's going to put that source in the destination folder. Okay. And then, of course, we're writing host downloaded file as a confirmation. And so let's go here, and you will see we have Tesla data. Okay, CSV data, that is. All right, so a couple of points just to note really quickly best practices that, of course, there's quite a few people that may not say, um, but this is just to protect you from getting a virus. First of all, does the company that you're downloading data or does the website that you're downloading data from have an API? If they don't, I would be very careful. I've worked with over 300, 400 APIs, and in terms of getting flat file data, CSV data, text data, you name it, even Excel data. And again, good companies have APIs. And then the other one is do they have a good reputation? And if both of those are true, then I would consider it fairly safe. If one of those is not true, I would be very careful. The last thing I would want is y'all to go out and and download a bunch of data that of course could be uh, corrupted or of course could put your machine at risk. So just be careful, make sure that they have an API. The API is going to allow you to do things easily anyway, whether it's looping, whether it's grabbing multiple files, um, APIs allow that ease of use. And then of course, if they don't have a good reputation and you can just ask around a little bit like, hey, uh, have you used uh, so-and-so's website? And people will usually tell you, oh, don't trust them at all. Um, the reputation that someone has because developers will always try to connect to APIs for various reasons and so if they don't have a good reputation you'll find out fairly quickly and then of course for those of you who are looking on how to mul uh, import those like I said refer to the uh, the private video of importing multiple flat files into SQL Server once you get it to a location then you can use that video to just get it into SQL Server